Hey, everybody. Welcome into m M&M and m Across the Board. And this is our all NFL, NFL crazy show this week as we get set. We had one game last night. Eric is ready with his football. We had one game last night, which we can touch on, but we are going to go across the NFL. We're going to break down the divisions, our picks for conference winners, Super Bowls, MVPs. We're going to do it all, guys. Uh, Eric McDowell, Sean Martin, Ashley Miller here with you for, I think, did we say this is week seven? Is this our Mickey Mantle week? Week seven, yes. Weeks, so seven is my, I love Mickey Mantle. He's one of my favorite players of all time. And I always wore the number seven because of him. So I have like an obsession with the number seven. So this show is going to rock strictly for that reason. <laughs> Very good. Also seven, Eric Crouch, 20 years ago, Heisman oh, Trophy, Huskers. I was going to say Heisman, Heisman Very Trophy. Good. Yes. Very good. Yeah, all right. No Eric, you're going you're gonna to kick it off with a couple divisions. Um, so why don't you take it away and we'll get started here. He's ready. Hello, friends, this. Jim Nance. Let's go to the AFC East. Hello, friends. All right. <laughs> I'm going to do voice of God later. I'm going to go fourth to first, touch on each of these. First of all, fourth has to be the Jets. Sorry. But they did get the best coaching candidate, Robert Sala. He's going to make a difference. They finally got it right. And we don't have to gaze over the sideline anymore. Get it? Sorry. <laughs> now, last year, they ranked 31st in passing. 32nd in offense, points, and third down. Can't get much worse unless you expand the league. Uh, Zach Wilson, I think he's got the accuracy, the vision, and if he has the time and protection he had at BYU, just watch out. Kid's really impressive. Corey Davis, great receiver, great buy. Mims and more. He's got a lot of toys to toss to this year. And C.J. Mosley, of course, is very rusty. If he can stay healthy, he is definitely a key to the surge. Young, raw, secondary, and they're going to get tested. Third is the Dolphins. Now, people need to remember that Tua is only 23, okay? Mm -hmm. He now has Bama's explosive Jalen Waddell. It's going to help his cause. Hopefully, Parker and Fuller could get back in the field for more weapons. And they were third in turnover ratio, so they, they do protect the football. I just did, too. I put it down for a sec. But Adam Butler is a huge pickup on the O-line. And uh, D-line, excuse me, and he's had over 100 pressures in 17, so he can make a difference. Baker had another 100-tackle season. Howard with 10 picks. So I, I like the Dolphins. I think they could be a winner in some of these other weaker divisions. But the best part is Brian Flores could be the first former Pats assistant, you guys, to actually be a good head coach. Mm -hmm. It's not a good track record, Patricia, and many others. Second, <laughs> painful to say, but the Patriots. Ashley, you were right on. Mac Jones now gets the keys to the car, and he has Josh, uh -huh. McDaniels, Driving, baby. Josh McDaniels right next to him in the driver's seat for the driver, Ed, as he's the driver, Ed, offensive coach. So great move. Bill doesn't like seven and nine, so they open up the checkbook. Do you know they spent over $150 million to bring eight guys back and bring in 12 new vets? Boy, yeah. the, uh, the, owner's got, the owner's got the cabbage to afford that scratch. Yeah, you no big he deal. Does. <laughs> now, <laughs> the most it. passing the kid will do will be to the tight ends. And if Hunter Henry and John o. Smith can be healthy, okay, I'm not going to say it's going to be like Gronk and Hernandez, but these guys got to stay in the field because there'll be a lot more dump-offs to these great tight ends. Running game, can't believe it's a running team now. They had a lot of options and traded White away. So there's also a great offensive line here. And then Dante Hightower. People forget that a lot of guys sat last year due to COVID. He's mm -hmm. back. Van Noy left Miami to return to the Pats. I think they'll get in. But, and it doesn't pain me, I'm a football fan, the Buffalo Bills have always been optimistic. And then in December, it's this terrible next year letdown. But not this year. Josh Allen has been a mutual love affair with the city. They love him. Perfect fit. I think he takes them to the next level, not just the division. And he broke many of the Kelly records, 4,000 passing yards, 37 TDs, eight games of 300. Uh, they have a solid linebacker in Milano. I really like Hyde and Poyer and that really, really underrated secondary, too. I think it's very good secondary. Buffalo is second in the league in points and offense, third in passing. Think about what I just said. That's your 2021 AFC East champs. Discussion on that division? Before yeah, I have no to... no qualms with the order, uh, exactly the same order. I do think the Dolphins become a little more interesting and that you could potentially swap the Dolphins and Patriots depending on quarterback play. You have, you know, 
Does Tua take that ne- next step? Does Mac Jones live up to the hype? You know, those two teams are kind of, I think talent wise, you mentioned like Xavier Howard, those guys in the, on the Miami defense are very, very good. They have some stars. And I think Brian Flores is the perfect guy for that team. Um, but the Buffalo Bills are far and away the best team in that division. Josh Allen will be an MVP candidate once again. And I think the Bills not walk through the division. Um, they'll have a little more competition this year. Uh, but I think the Bills win that division and they probably win it pretty easily. Yeah, yeah I, I think Buffalo wins the division. I think the experience they got last year getting to the AFC title game, sometimes you've got to get to the right to the doorstep, get beat, learn from it. I think they win the division. I like Miami. I like what Brian Flores mm-hmm. has done. Yeah, I think they're going to get second place and maybe a tiebreaker over the mm-hmm. Patriots. You know, a month ago we talked about rookie quarterbacks, and I said we don't know what what um, Mac Jones is. Well, he's now the starting quarterback there, so he obviously has got something going on really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Jets are probably going to be a little better, but I think they're going to take just a little bit of a step back. Fair so enough. let's head to the NFC South, and we'll start with number four. And I'm going to put Atlanta there below Carolina. Ooh. Here's why. Okay. Now they. They gave up nearly 400 yards a game. That needs to be addressed. No question mm-hmm. about it. Grady Jarrett is a pro bowler up front, but the secondary folks, just not a lot of strength there. They're going to give up a ton of yards again. Now, Matt Ryan doesn't have a lot of talent to hand off to, okay? And he's lost Leo Jones, and you think there's nobody to pass to now. So it's I do have somebody in mind, of course, but Calvin Ridley is the deep threat. Now watch out for Kyle Pitts, the tight end from the Gators. Yeah. This kid is a stud. He's going to snap a lot of big grabs. You'll hear his name later, too. And they've got a new veteran coaching staff that they hope can finish. And we all know it started with the Super Bowl. But last year, can you believe this? They lost eight one-score leads last fall. The optimist said, hey, we could have won a lot. The pessimist says, we didn't. That puts Carolina in third, Okay. They didn't stay in the sideline in the draft. They made five trades and got 11 picks. So they really are doing the rebuild. And once again, here we go with a former Jet QB trying to rebound elsewhere. Darnold has a lot of youth up front. So remember that. Christian McCaffrey, love him. Number one fantasy pick in many drafts. Locker room needs name tags because everybody is so new in Carolina. Uh, Brian Burns led the, here we go again, young line, this time defensively, nine sacks, 21 hits. A lot of youth. People need to be patient there. Young defense. They need to improve in their picks. And Matt Rule and the fans need patience. And Carolina has patience. Now, number two, I'm putting the Saints here. No surprise. Sad to say Drew ain't marching in anymore. Did pretty well on NBC uh, in his first game. And now it's a talented yet scary Jameis Winston taking over. I would not want to see him quarterback in Philadelphia, New York, or New England. Eek! Now, it's not like the cupboard is bare. There's eight former pro bowlers on that roster and many all pros. Alvin Kamara, 16 TDs. Michael Thomas, a great receiver. So there's a lot of help there. Uh, I think the secondary is fantastic. And you got Jenkins and Williams, the defense, very underrated because they think of the offense and the Saints. If Winston is solid and he can put up the numbers, stop the ints, I think New Orleans has a lot of talent to get 10 wins, and I think we'll see them in the playoffs. But they'll be number two behind, of course, the Buccaneers. How often does a champion in any sport bring back every starter? 22 starters are back. So Brady has had a full off season, which we know he didn't have last year. Plenty of film of him with these guys, and they got hot down the stretch, the eight game win streak. Uh, the catch, the receivers are just phenomenal. Evans and Godwin brought him back over 130 catches, 20 TDs. Brown has seemed to settled in and cleared his head, and Gronk, of course. I mean, God, just win. And let's not forget there's a great D there. Barrett White at linebacker, Davis in the secondary, a sharp O line. Deep D line, a lot of smiles for the QB TB. Mm-hmm. What do you think? It's probably a given as to who we think is the top, but the NFC South, the question yeah. may be at the bottom too, right? Yeah, I, I think the Bucks again are the far and away number one. I, to me, everybody's playing for second, and I just wouldn't be surprised if the Saints don't come in second in that division. Like, say Jameis doesn't work out, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like Atlanta sneaks up and is the second-best team in that division, depending on 
uh, you know, they've got a new head coach. There's a lot to be desired still with that team. And the Panthers, you, like you said, are young. I, I put the Panthers behind the Falcons just because of the lack of experience that, that probably the, the Falcons have more of, especially at the QB position. Um, but yeah, the Bucks for me are far and away number one. But listen, we saw they played last night. We've got film on them. And I think that's interesting. Like you said, hey, now they've got film and, and they're, they've got reps and whatever. But now everybody has film on that team. So yeah. while they should be their Super Bowl champs, they return everyone. They should be the best team. We saw last night the Cowboys had a plan and gave them a run for their money and didn't quite get there because Tom Brady is Tom Brady and you give Tom Brady the ball back with a minute. And he's going to march down the field and score a touchdown because that's what a seven time Super Bowl champ does. Um, I think the Bucs have the best linebacking core in football with the two guys you mentioned. I think, it, and I don't know that it's all that close. There's probably a couple other teams that, I, that I'll name along the way, but I think their yeah. linebackers are a huge strength of theirs. And, you know, Tom Brady and the offense are going to score points. Antonio Brown looks back. He had one of the best games probably that he's had in three years last night. And, you win a game despite Chris Godwin dropping a touchdown pass in his hands <laughs> and then fumbling at the goal line into the end zone. So when you can do that, it, it tells you how far the other way it could have gone. Like that probably could have been a 14 point game uh, instead of the back and forth one, two point game that it was. Yeah. I look at that. Uh, Tampa has got to be the team to beat. I think the interesting player in this division is Jameis Winston. Mm -hmm. I think the best yeah. thing ever happened to him was getting cut by Tampa and spending a year with Drew Brees. I think he could have a big year for the Saints. Sean Payton knows how to knows how to have a quarterback that can fill up the stat sheet. Carolina is no good. Atlanta, now you got Kyle Pitts, a tight end that mm -hmm. uh, people think may may change that position a little bit. It's a it's a two horse race, but uh that second horse is going to be about five furlongs behind Tampa Bay, I think. Exactly. Uh, it's it's Tampa Bay's division, and you know set themselves up for the playoffs. Although I think they they yeah they could have won that game. I, I I thought they would have an easier time last night, but you know what you 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 see the championship banner go up and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and sometimes you see teams struggle a little bit coming out of the game when they have those ceremonies, and they might have just yeah. suffered from that. That first game of the season, I think it's always people are kind of getting their feet under them. Not everyone's played in the preseason. We're just kind of figuring things out. So um, I love week one because you learn, you feel like you learn a lot about teams, but at the same time you think, well, if that Bucks team is significantly better, you know, 10 weeks from now, which you know they will be, they will probably end up being the team we thought they would be. Well, Ashley, I'm going to hand off the uh, football to you before we head All to the right. NFC. If we're going to the NFC East, then it's Joe Buck time. So <laughs> let's go to the NFC East, and here's Ashley live NFC on Fox. Time. And uh, just a reminder, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, so that's my bad, but where you can find us. If you're watching us on YouTube, we got YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, um, Apple, iTunes, uh, and our Twitter handle at MMMATB1, which is MMM across the board one. So we hope you follow along, share it, and join us every week from here on out. Um, if you don't love football, we'll get back to the other sports a little bit next <laughs> week. But this is the start of the NFL season. So if you don't love football, I don't know what to tell you for this one. Uh, <laughs> NFC East, this is this is where my team resides. And this is, I mean, for the last two, three seasons has been – the worst division in football. And I'm not sure that it's, I think it's better this year, but I'm not going to say it's much better. We've got more, more mediocre teams instead of like all bad teams. Um, so I'm going to start with Philadelphia. This is a team that, you know, when they drafted Jalen Hurts and they had Carson Wentz, I think people had such high expectations for, but this is a team that was interested in Deshaun Watson, which should tell you everything you need to know about what they think about Jalen Hurts. Like, he is probably not their quarterback of the future. He'll be their quarterback this season, but probably not their quarterback of the future. So no real support in Hurts and just an aging defense. So I, I think this is a team that's really going to struggle this year. First-year head coach in Nick Sirianni, who came from the Colts. Um, I think it's going to be a long year for Philadelphia fans, and you know those fans will not be kind. They will be getting booed just like the Mets <laughs> fans were booing their fans. That's how it goes. <laughs> uh, next for me, so guys, I kind of go a t like a 2A 
a tied for second, but if I have to pick, I'm going to put the Giants third in this division. Uh, I think the Giants will be better, and we've talked about this before. This is all going to hinge on Daniel Jones. They've given him weapons in the offseason. They signed Kenny, Gall- uh, Kenny Galladay. They signed Kyle Rudolph. Saquon Barkley is back. He's coming off an ACL tear, so we'll see what he can do. Their offensive line, I don't think they've done enough on the offensive line, but they've done more on the offensive line. So this is a big year for Daniel Jones. I think if he – I'm not saying they have to make the playoffs, but this team has to be better. They have to come close to 500 for him, I think, for the Giants to not go and draft another quarterback next year. Um, I'm not saying they'll be done with him, but they may be like, you know what, we're going to draft another guy and make you really work for this. But this is Daniel Jones's show for right now. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I mean, the O-line, Solder, Gates, Hernandez, Lemieux, Andrew Thomas. Meh. Will it be enough to protect him? Probably not. Their defense is pretty good. Uh, Lorenzo Carter at linebacker. Blake Martinez at linebacker. I like both of those guys. Super young secondary, but names that like kind of make you take a second, you know, Bradbury, Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan, and Adoree Jackson. Like those are names that make you think like, whoa, those are, they've got some stars. Does it all come together or not? I'm not sure. But their defense was certainly better last year and kept them in games that their offense couldn't keep them in. So to the Washington football team, the division champs reigning, um, and the biggest question mark for, I mean, they guys, they will probably have the, the best defense, if not one of the best defenses in all of football, uh, with chase young leading the charge on the D line, the biggest question for me, and it's been the biggest question the whole time, whether it was Haskins last year or, uh, Alex Smith. Now you've got Ryan Fitzpatrick and we've seen Fitz magic, but it's oftentimes like a, So you're going to have to ride the wave of what Ryan Fitzpatrick brings to this team, but the defense will keep them in games. And honestly, the defense will score points. So they've got as good a chance as any. Um, Yeah. And the biggest question mark, just can you score enough points to complement your defense? The number one team for me is the Cowboys. And I think Dallas's performance last night against the reigning Super Bowl champs just kind of reaffirmed that they have the weapons there It looks like Dak is back. Uh, He played very well last night. He took a couple hits. He moved around a little bit. So he looked like a healthy version of Dak Prescott. And man, does he have weapons. Like C.D. Lamb is going to be an absolute star in this league. An absolute star. Uh, Michael Gallup. Zach Martin wasn't even there last night, and people made a huge deal about that. He's one of the best offensive linemen in football. He's on the COVID list, and yet they played – you know, they played the Super Bowl champs to the last down to the last 30 seconds. Um, so if Dak is back, which the first game says he probably is, their defense is really good. They've got a guy like Micah Parsons, who to me was the steal of the draft. He yeah. fell all the way down to the Cowboys. Yes. I thought he was one of the best picks of the first round for them. Um, yeah, but they've got some changes. Dan Quinn at D, D coordinator is new for them. So there's a lot of moving parts, but I think they're the most talented team and they should win that division. If they don't, that's probably a disappointment uh, for them. Yeah. I I think going back to Philadelphia, they're, they're going to be in the candidate. They might just be on the clock for the draft. Uh, They're going to be terrible. Jalen Hurts is not, I don't think he's an NFL caliber quarterback for a full season. Um, I just don't see it. The giants again, same thing with Daniel Jones. I think the giants are going to be looking at a quarterback next year. The problem I have with Dallas is the the way they played last night. Yeah, and Amari Cooper's a stud. Mm-hmm. I'm used to Amari Cooper dropping key passes on third and eight from his time with the Raiders. Um, I saw that I coming, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I was coming. Um, yeah. And Lamb is transcendent. The problem I had was they didn't really use Ezekiel Elliott last night, mm-hmm. and they're going to have to incorporate that because their defense was awful last year. I don't know how much better it's going to be this year. They're going to have to score over 30 points a game to win games. You're going to have to run the ball. You're going to have to not utilize that offensive, uh, the, the passing weapons as much because you need to keep your defense fresh and off the field. For that reason, I like Washington. I, the Redskins might mm. win, might go 7-11, and 11, but I think it's good, good <laughs> enough to play postseason football uh, this year, in, or 7-10. Yeah. and it, it might be enough to get them there. Fitzpatrick is all over the place, good and bad. But that might just be enough for them to win because they have other things. Antonio Gibson's really good in the backfield. And and Chase Young, I think, could be the breakout player 
um, coming off of a very good rookie year to lead that defense. I've never seen a division, you guys, where the quarterback of the future is the quarterback of the present and past. I mean, (laughs) that's basically (laughs) describes two of these teams. Philly, maybe they bring back Foles. I don't know. Find McNabb somewhere. It's just ridiculous. And, And as for Fitzpatrick, he's a stopper. But he's going to last longer than George Blanda. He could play till he's 70 and still get jobs. Tells you the, the caliber of quarterback play overall. Uh, Giants, obviously, I, I think the, the key there, too, is Barkley and take a lot of more pressure off Jones. But mm-hmm. I can't believe I'm saying I like Dallas. I never think I've uttered those words, but I really think it's their division. And yeah, Jerry Jones too. is not the quick hook you would expect as an owner. I mean, look at how long Garrett stayed there. It was amazing. But – I want to talk about, touch on Dallas about their defense last year gave up the most points in franchise history, okay? But as you said, Ashley, they addressed it. They had big DL signings, three, three great draft picks. The receiving core, I think, is as deep as anybody, Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup, and and Dak is back, looked healthy, looked good, uh, easily could have, you know, probably should have beaten the defending champs in that season opener. So I like Dallas, but... uh, Someday, when Fitzpatrick uh, retires at age 60, maybe these other teams will finally find a quarterback for the future and not the past. All right, let's go to the AFC South. Um, Again, I think, well, I'm not going to say there's a runaway leader in this division, but there there should be a team that wins this division without too much much trouble. I'm going to start with the Texans. This team is an absolute mess. I mean, they are probably as bad off as the Philadelphia Eagles. They're st- starting Tyrod Taylor with a first-year head coach in David Culley, and he took over a train wreck, a dumpster fire. I mean, Deshaun Watson will probably never play in a Texans uniform. We might not ever see Deshaun Watson play in the NFL again if things go, you know, continue to go sideways for him, um, which is is sad because they were already bad with Deshaun Watson. They got rid of all yeah. of their best assets. J.J. <laughs> Watt left. They traded DeAndre Hopkins. Like, they gave Watson nothing, and now you're giving Tyrod Taylor very little. This team is going to be very bad. Uh, <laughs> next for me... Jags and Colts, again, are interesting, like an interesting combo. And I think it depends. Is Carson Wentz healthy? Does he stay on the field? Does he give them a chance? Does Trevor Lawrence live up to the hype? Um, The Jaguars will be better. There is absolutely no doubt about that with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. And he's your starter because they traded away Gardner Minshew. But Travis Etienne already out for the year with a foot injury. So we're talking about like people thought that would be a really good combo. Two guys who played in college together taking the field now uh, as pros and they won't have him. I think they'll win six games, maybe seven if they're lucky. So they're still, I still think they're below 500 team. Um, But I think we're going to get glimpses. And even if we get glimpses of like a really polished put together product, I think that will be enough for Jags fans to think like, all right, we'll wait it out another year. Let's build a little more around him. We'll get ETN back. And this could be a team of the future, say three, four years from now, maybe. Uh, the Colts, again, I think it's dependent on on Carson Wentz. He it looks like he's going to play. This team, again, has one of the better defenses in all of the league. I mean, you got Darius Leonard and DeForest Buckner anchoring that defense. This is a very good defense that will keep you in games. Yeah. You now need Carson Wentz to score uh, and put up enough points on offense. Frank Reich in his fourth season, uh, but they've had trouble. Like they've already had COVID issues. Listen, Carson Wentz goes and has surgery. He's out for five to 12 weeks, he comes right back, and then he's on the COVID list. So it's going to be interesting how COVID affects teams. And certainly we talked about this before, unvaccinated players versus vaccinated players. The, the positive to being vaccinated is you have to sit out less time than if you're unvaccinated. So it could be interesting if teams like the Bills miss players for huge chunks of time. Um, and that will that will certainly hurt better teams more than it's going to hurt or certainly hurt better teams more than it hurts worse teams. And then the Titans, to me, are the best team in this division, which is hard for me to say. Like, I still have trouble wrapping my ra- mind around a Ryan Tannehill-led <laughs> offense being the best at anything. But when you have Derrick Henry, he's one of the best running backs still. He went over 2,000 yards last season. One of the best running backs still in the NFL. 
Arthur, uh, Arthur Smith leaves. He's their offensive coordinator. So what they were doing was, listen, they weren't like setting the world on fire with their offense at any point, but they were doing just enough. They were grinding out and doing just enough to get wins uh, and just kind of like a Titans kind of way. He leaves, so how much do they change their offense? Who knows? But you add, you already have A.J. Uh, AJ Brown, and you add, I'm going to miss the name on this, uh, of course, Julio Jones. You add Julio Jones, and these are like, these are like robots, like Megatron-type receivers with A.J. Brown uh, on the other side of Julio Jones. They're going to be very tough to stop. If Tannehill can take advantage of his weapons, but if he doesn't, then you got Derrick Henry. It's a pretty good backup plan. So I think to me, the Titans win, but they had the 28th ranked defense last year. They add Bud Dupree. They should be better on defense, but they're going to have to take a huge step on defense in order to make, not win the division. I think they win the division either way, but to get wins in the playoffs, you need to take a huge step on defense. What you talk about Houston, and if there is a, and I don't think there is a statue of Bill O'Brien in the city of Houston, it has been torn down. If it hasn't, tear it down because it uh, destroyed the franchise. Okay. Yep. The Texans are worse than the years of when the Oilers were in the AFC or AFL before they got good, before Warren Moon. The Oilers were horrible. This franchise is a disgrace because of that individual. Sorry, Mrs. O'Brien, if you're watching, I apologize, but it will take it hurts. years for that team to rebuild, to be rebuilt. Uh, I, I think one other point before I touch on the t Tennessee is I do hope Urban Meyer, and I don't think he will become the Saban or Spurrier NFL coaching experience. We know that those two things did not work out in those places, Miami and in Washington. This is a different situation, and you've got to have, as we say, the keys to the car, and I think Urban Meyer will have the time, and Lawrence is the real deal. But as for the Texans, Right on, Ashley. Uh, it's hard to think that they would win a division. It's hard to think about them. But there's two things I'd want to touch on. One is that they have a new look secondary. I think that's going to be interesting. The numbers they put up are fantasy football fun and friendly numbers. But the thing to watch about Tennessee, they have proven that they can win in the road in the playoffs. And I think we both, all of us know, Tennessee will probably not get a bye. Mm -hmm. So if they win the division, they could, they'll still probably be on the road even if they win the division. So they can win. They've won in Foxborough. They win on the road in the playoffs. Tennessee will be that tough out, the team that nobody wants to play. Yep. And good luck trying to tackle uh, Derrick Henry. Just watching him on TV, I've never seen him in person. But, Sean, oh, my God, he carries like three guys with him. Yeah, I think the thing with Tennessee has going for him is they know who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tannehill exactly. is – Tannehill is Tannehill, but he is, yep. if you find in the things that he does well, he does them well enough. Mm -hmm. Adding Julio Jones is big, but Derrick Henry, where he is effective is as the season goes along, he gets stronger. He's a, he's a, he's a bulldozer. And, you know, you start facing teams in weeks 13, 14, 15, he's getting stronger as other teams are getting worn out from the, from the season going along. And now we have seven teams. Yeah. Going. Yep. That's why Tennessee's going to win that division. The Colts have the defense. I, I don't. Yep. I don't know what they're going to get from their quarterbacks. I don't think mm -hmm. they know. <laughs> Jacksonville's got got the right guy in Trevor Lawrence. We'll see how Meyer adjusts to the NFL game. I think the Jags, like you said, Ashley, five, six, seven wins somewhere mm -hmm. like that. Um, and the Texans are just a complete dumpster fire. I don't think I could top what what, what Eric said about them. Um, but they are a hot mess, and it's going to be a long year. And the sad part about the the fans down in Houston is the Rockets are awful. You know, and you know, it's bad. yeah, yeah, the garbage can team is, is playing well, so maybe you got to hang your hat on them. But after that, it's going to be a long winter. Yeah, it's bad. Well, I, I had the the worst division in football, we think, in the NFC East, and I also got the best division in football, which is pretty great. Um, in the NFC West, and this to me is a total crapshoot. I mean, I would. I, I have my picks, but I would not be surprised if any team in this division wins it. I just wouldn't be surprised because all of them have enough talent that if put together the right way could win the division. Uh, I went Seahawks fourth, which wow. maybe even surprised myself. Um, I saw a lot of think people out there, Cardinals fourth. I'm going to, I'm going to expect the Cardinals to take the next step this year. Cause I think they underachieved tremendously last year. I'm going to go Cardinals fourth. I think the just the experiment is over. 
they're known for, or, uh, sorry, the Seahawks, the experiment is over. The Legion of Boom is no longer. They call it that, but they're not elite on defense. They don't have an elite secondary. They don't have a dominant pass rush. They don't have that anymore. So they rely way too much uh, on Russell Wilson. They're going to need Jamal Adams to be great. And he wasn't really great in a coverage capacity last year. He was phenomenal as a blitzer. Um, so they're going to have to use him again like that. But their defense was ranked 22nd last year. That's not what we know of as like a typical Seattle Seahawks defense. So for me, I, I just think until they like prove that they are the Seahawks of three, four, five years ago, uh, I'm out on the Seahawks. Uh, the Cardinals, and this, again, it could go either way. And this is why this division is so great, because who the heck knows? Um, I like the Cardinals. I think... Adding A.J. Green to DeAndre Hopkins is another one-two punch similar to what the Titans have. Uh, I think this is they're two of the better receivers in football. They're getting older. That's a, a problem. But when you have a guy like Kyler Murray who can run with the best of them, uh, these are two huge weapons for them to have. Third year of his rookie deal, I think this is a big year for the Cardinals because Cliff and Kyler came in together. I think if things don't work out this year, Things get a little dicey, and we'll revisit this later in the show, but I think Cliff Kingsbury, if they come in last in the division, he, his seat gets very, very hot because you got to try to take advantage of a really talented rookie quarterback or a really talented quarterback on his rookie deal before you have to pay him this crazy amount of money with Kyler Murray. Their defense is better. D coordinator is Vance Joseph. He probably did more with their defense last year than people thought he would, but you add J.J. Watt. I know he's old, but he's still J.J. Watt. And they did a really good job. Uh, they drafted Zavin Collins, Zavin Collins um, out of Tulsa in the first round. That's a good pickup for them. So defensively, I think they'll be better. Is their revolutionary air raid offense outdated? Maybe. And if that's the case, like I said, Cliff Kingsbury seat gets pretty hot. I love the Niners. I think the Niners would have been one of the better teams in football last year had they not been decimated by injuries. So I would not be surprised if they win this division. I also wouldn't be surprised if the quarterback position is a total train wreck and they come in third or fourth in the division. But they have so much talent offensively. So much. I mean, they have all the receivers. They've got George Kittle. Defensively, if Bosa is back and he's healthy, he's coming off an ACL tear. If he's healthy, they're super, super talented. What they do at the quarterback position to me is, is where this team goes. Like, Jimmy Garoppolo, I, I don't like the idea of platooning. I'm not sure that they will platoon. My guess is, and we've talked about this, I think they go to Trey Lance midseason. Obviously, if they do that, it's because things aren't going well. But whatever quarterback it is, they've got Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Mohamed Sanu, Raheem Mostert turned out to be one of the best running backs in all of football. Um, so they've got the weapons, and I think it's important for them to, again, take the next step Um or Kyle Shanahan seat might get pretty hot too. Mm -hmm. To me, the NFC West is the Rams. Um, I, I think Matthew Stafford, and I know people are putting a lot of stock into Matthew Stafford, but I think a lot of people would tell you Jared Goff was holding that team back. Matthew Stafford can take them to the next level. He totally. can stretch the field, yeah. make that team vertical, which, which Jared Goff couldn't do. They were too horizontal. So I think he is the, the key to that. He, he lets them take the next step. We know their defense was really good. Uh, Aaron Donald is still the best player, one of the best players in all of football on the defensive side of the ball. You've got Jalen Ramsey as a cornerback, um, but they lost their defensive coordinator. Does that change anything? I don't know, but Brandon Staley is now the head coach of the Chargers. So I still think there's infinite possibilities with Matthew Stafford as the quarterback of that offense, and I like them to win the division. But again, I would not be surprised if – <laughs> anybody wins it or loses it for that matter. I, I think what you find out this year, and actually we great minds think alike. I, I think um, what you find out this year about Matthew Stafford is, was he the quarterback everybody thought he would be, but on a yep. bad team or was he an overrated guy on a really bad team and he just couldn't elevate him. Perfectly yeah. put. Yeah. I like the Rams in this division. This, this division, like the AFC East has three teams going to the playoffs. I think. Yeah. Um, I think it's the Rams year. Stafford makes that difference. Um, you know, the running game, I think Sony Michelle's going to step up and he's got a big opportunity down there for him. Mm -hmm. Um, but that defense is, is one of the best in the league. 
And I think that gets them through some of those slugfests that they're going to have. I do like the 49ers that last year was a, you know, it was what it was injuries. Everything else can decimate you. I like Garoppolo. I, I, yeah. I'm a Jimmy G guy. I think he's going to do well there. I think Trey Lance sits. Seattle, um, Russell Wilson, I think he's got enough to get them where they need to be. He has shown he was an MVP candidate for most of last year. Um, in Arizona, I think they're going to finish last, but I think they're going to probably win eight games. Yeah, um, It's going to be a very competitive division. I think they're going to be all up here, and the, the NFC East is going to be down and all balances out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, Arizona is going to be a very good team but the last team in, in the best division in the sport. Well, actually, it, it is the toughest division. And if you get this one to four correctly, you deserve an Emmy TV personality yeah. because you really I, deserve one. It's impossible. I like, it really I like to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you, you can make a case for anybody, but I'm with both of you on the Rams. I've, I've seen some people even think they're going to make the Super Bowl. And, and what I really – want to point out too on on the fact with Stafford okay look at the previous star Lions who got so frustrated they just threw their career away Sanders still had a lot of mileage left Mm -hmm. Megatron still had a lot of mileage could have gone elsewhere Stafford was about probably that close to packing it in good for him he didn't and it was a good trade for both clubs because both wanted the change he was 74 90 and one and no playoff wins well that's what happens people when you're dealing with chicken boom now he has chicken salad. So <laughs> I think he's going to have a phenomenal year. I'd love to see them run the table. I think they have a shot at the bowl. Anybody that comes out of that division uh, really is going to be a, a big contender. So I'm with you. I think the Rams uh, and defensively, Ramsey and Donald, this is a team that's going to be so fun to watch. And I hope they're on national TV quite often because the defense is so exciting with the big stars and everybody wants to see what Stafford can do with a real football team in front of him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bear with me. I'm having a technical glitch here. Oh, technical difficulties. Well, you know where you can find us pretty much everywhere. YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, Apple iTunes. I always forget. I got to get better at that. Uh, but at, on Twitter, we are at MMM. ATB one MMM across the board one. And this is our NFL. We'll call it the NFL round table. We're breaking it all down, giving you our opinions, whether you want them or not. Um, and we'll see, you know, what, guys, we'll bring this back at the end of the year and see which one of us look the smartest. <laughs> here, and here is my glitch. We have, uh, we've got a real little spot here from one of our advertisers and I, I lost it on my computer. So I'm going to read it off my phone. Do it up. Johnstown supply in Troy. Hey, folks, fall is officially here, and that means changes may be coming to your home. Does your furnace need to be replaced, or are you looking for an upgrade to your heating system? Johnstown Supply and Troy can make sure all your home, make sure your home is heated properly for this colder weather that's on the way. A family-owned and operated business, Johnstown Supply and Troy has been helping upstate New York residents for decades. Visit their store on 6th Avenue in Troy for more information on how they can help you this fall. Whether it's finding the proper change for your filters or making sure your home is heated properly for the new weather, Johnstown Supply and Troy staff can help you answer any questions you may have. From George to Tom and many more, the staff is looking forward to seeing you. Follow them on Facebook or call them today at 518-272-5922, Johnstown Supply and Troy. Uh, Thank them for their support. What way? Thank you. This way. Here we go. Right there. That logo. (laughs) There it is. So... I've been charged with previewing the AFC West. Oh, hold on. Here Mike Tarico with you oh, now <laughs> on the I game of the Mike week. Tirico. Let's head to the AFC West. Be somebody else. Be Al Michaels. Mike Tarico's terrible. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, sorry. Holy sorry. Oh, wow. Like, this is a blasphemy. tough group. Oh, my God. Last place. The only th- I'll tell you what I love about the Denver Broncos is – John Elway is one of the worst executives uh, in recent memory. <laughs> Sean that, couldn't bear to put the Raiders in last place. That's that, what it was. No. John couldn't bear it. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. John Elway <laughs> has made the Broncos a really bad organization on the field, and I think that's going to translate again this year. Again, we Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater is probably the most common guy we've talked about in this podcast. Yeah. If he's your quarterback, man, eh, you're going 6-11, and 11, folks. So I, I don't see it in Denver. I don't think they have a whole lot of talent there. And just do me a favor out there in, in the Rockies. Keep John Elway in charge. Make King Elway the, the emperor of the whole franchise. Keep it going. Don't ever get rid of him because I'm loving his run. Third 
I, I, I really like Justin Herbert for the Chargers, um, but I don't know how much I like the other, the rest of the group. Their defense lost some players. I, and I think, again, you know, does this matter? Some players might tell you it matter, but I think if when you have – all your home games and 90% of the crowd is, uh, is opposing fans. I think that right. kind of wears on you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I think the seven charger season ticket holders are going to have a good time in their games, but everybody else it's, it's going to be that. I, I don't think the chargers have the talent to make a run to the playoffs this year. They have the right quarterback and maybe they can build on that, but I think they're a year or two away. Uh, the Raiders. Yeah. Look, I'm a Homer, but I also know the talents there. They got a lot of offensive weapons. They rebuilt the offensive line. We'll see how that goes. The whole question with the Raiders is, did anybody there learn how to tackle the football? <laughs> okay, Paul Gunther was the fall guy last year, and deservedly so. His system was too complicated. It was ineffective. He should have never even been there last year. He should have gone the year before. He was awful. The Raiders have a recent history of getting all this great talent in from the draft or even free agency, and as soon as they hit town with Paul Gunther as the de defensive coordinator, they're terrible. After a while, is it the system or is it the players? They can't all be terrible. They can't all have gotten lazy once they got paid. So you look at Gunther. He's out. Gus Bradley's in from San Diego. I like what the Raiders have done. They brought in some linebackers. They got K.J. Wright just now from Seattle. Um, Denzel Perriman played with Bradley in San Diego. They got some good players on the defensive front. The secondary is always going to be a question, and we'll see. I, I'm a Derek Carr guy. There's a lot of hashtag Carbashians on Twitter that are not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and then we get into some delightful banter there. I, I I like Derek Carr. I think he stepped up as a leader of the team. He's got some weapons there with rugs. And Darren Waller is the, probably the second best tight end in football. Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake should be a nice balance um, running the football. And then go back to what I said about Dallas. Dallas needs to run the ball a little more to hide that defense and protect that defense. The Raiders might be a little bit more the same. They were that way last year. If they didn't score 30 points, they didn't win. Um, so we'll see how they do. Now the Chiefs, look, they've been in the Super Bowl two years in a row. Um, they've been the best team in football, save for that uh, game uh, against Tampa Bay a few months mm -hmm. ago. I think the Chiefs win the division, but I think they come back to the pack a little bit. Uh, five losses, maybe six. I think injuries are, are always a concern. The law of averages in the NFL always seem to balance themselves out. Yeah. The Chiefs will make the playoffs, but they're not going to be as dominant um, as they've been the last two years. Ashley, what about you? Uh, Raiders, yeah, are you, are you I, picking the Raiders to go 17-0? Uh, no, I, I might break your heart here. Oh. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not super sold on this, but yeah, I'm going to pick them last, Sean. I, in that division, their, their secondary is not good. Uh, and you're playing a guy like Patrick Mahomes. And I, I think that Justin Herbert is going to be an absolute star. And I, re, I the, the Chargers are a team that I am on this year. Um, maybe against my better judgment. I really like the Chargers, uh, I get what you're saying about Teddy Bridgewater, but the Broncos <laughs> defense is one of the best in the league. And I'm not sure that it's even debatable. Like it's a top five defense. They've done a ton. Um, and I think, I think they're, so I'm going to go Raiders, Chargers, ah, Raiders, Broncos, Chargers, Chiefs. Uh, if that, if you can believe it. Was I but too I quick just, with my great minds assessment? Love yeah, you. Yeah, probably. Now, now, now we're not such we're not such great minds. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that's uh, that's just me. This division to me is very difficult. Um, but I think the Broncos de the defense is so so good, uh, and I think I'm with Eric in that. Like Teddy Bridgewater to me will get the job done. He will do enough for that team. He's better than Drew Lock. He'll do enough to make that team good. The Chiefs, again, can do no wrong in that division in particular. I think they'll regress on the national stage. But, yeah, that's me. Raiders, Chargers, Broncos, Chiefs. Well, to me, Kansas City, one thing to watch, too, out of division, they play Baltimore, they pay, play Buffalo, they play Green Bay. Okay, so those are out of division games, never mind the ones that they've got. And talk about a team that addressed an issue. Eight new guys in the offensive line. Can you even play eight new guys at one time on an offensive line? So they went out and they got the, the area that need, that was exposed in the bowl. They really did that. Uh, also with the Bill Thune from the Patriots, he is a great player. 
uh, for that line. So you have to go with the Chiefs. I think the Chargers, I read somewhere where they say they have the best quarterback in the division. Excuse me, but he is. <laughs> but I, think, I think there's somebody in the Midwest that might disagree with that. Yeah. I think the Chargers will be in the mix, but I don't think they'll be there at the end. Um, it's nice to hear positive things about Derek Carr, Sean, because everywhere else in the press, and he just gets roasted and lambasted. I'm hearing that you know that Davis might buy out Gruden and stuff. I mean, calm down. No, here. no Gruden's way. here to and stay. You, Mayock will be the fall guy. Even though know, Gruden, Mayock's a GM. Gruden's the coach, but Gruden's Mayock's, Mayock's boss. Anybody that doesn't see that, I got news for you. Yeah, Mayock will be the fall guy if it goes south again in the second half of the year because the Raiders have faded two years in a row down the stretch. It's been horrible and, and painful to watch. Now, Denver had uh, Tim Tebow and won despite him, and I don't think Denver is yeah. going to win despite Bridgewater. He's more talented. I think he can make more things happen. He's not going to be the guy to put up 5,000 yards or whatever, but I agree with Ashley. We've said this before that I think Bridgewater will make them an improved team. Uh, but I don't see them uh, getting out of the basement at this point. I would go moving up. I'd go Denver, the Raiders, Chargers in a very close call, and then the Chiefs. And I think at least uh, you didn't, at least you didn't put them in last, Sean. Uh, oh, I'm not <laughs> often speechless. You guys are killing me. Well, you know what, Eric? Sean might look make us all look stupid when uh, we come back at the end and the, the Broncos have won four games and Teddy Bridgewater is not the starting quarterback. He'll be like, ha-ha, I told you so. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, NFC North. The coach I'm probably most excited about is in Detroit. Mm. Uh, I think he's mm. going to bring a lot, of, a lot of swagger and a little kick to that team. He seems like one of those tough guys. He should be in Pittsburgh, right? Bill Cowher type. Um, but I think Detroit's going to struggle. Go off, you know, the Rams, you know, they didn't want them. Uh, they're they're going to finish last. I think they're building something there. It's going to take them a little bit. Uh, so they're last place for me. The Bears, Justin Fields eventually will take over, and I think he's going to have a nice go there. And they, they have some guys that can play third place for them. I like Minnesota to make the playoffs as a wild card if Dalvin Cook can stay healthy. Uh, Kirk Cousins, is he's one of those guys that, He's like Fitzpatrick. He's up and he's down. He's up and he's down. But he's got some talent around him. And if they can come out with a nice, sound um, offensive philosophy, let Cousins manage the game, don't try and make him win anything, I think they're going to go to the playoffs. Um, Green Bay, look, Aaron Rodgers has a chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And this is probably going to be his last year there, and there's nothing better to stick it to the employer that's been, in your mind, sticking it to you mm -hmm. by, by leading them to a great year and then taking off. So – I, I like the Packers just because of Rodgers and the Devontae Adams. He's leaving after this year, too. He's already broken up contract negotiations. One last ride for those two and, and the rest of the pack uh, to win that division. Well, the Lions seem as though they got it right. We hope so. Um, there's just got to be some patience there, and I don't know how anybody can be patient in Detroit, but I think that was a good hire, and I think they'll be better, but they'll still be four. Uh, number three with the Bears. The Bears are already better because Trubisky isn't there. <laughs> now Fields could be the next guy, but I was going to say that they're not because they're starting Andy Dalton. Exactly, but the point is, it's like if Fields is the next, who was before him? That's yeah. the question. They haven't had anybody there. Cutler always got lamb basted too. So, uh, but if they're patient with him, hopefully that would be a good thing because I think Fields was a, a tremendous pickup. It cost a lot to do it, but sometimes you got to go for it. You got to get it right. Uh, Vikings. I think Zimmer is on the hot seat. He's got some veteran staff coaches, but that team's got to get there. And I think they've got to get in the playoffs or Zimmer might be zonked. Uh, but to me, it is Green Bay. Uh, it, I think it's it would be a perfect way for Rodgers to leave Green Bay. He's back. Now, let's keep in mind that the pack went 26 and 6 the last two years. People don't talk about that. Yeah, the division's kind of weak. I get it. But they still won 26 or 32 games, okay? Mm -hmm. And they make the conference. Finals. So I really like Green Bay. I think they're going to take it to the next step. And uh, uh, we'll probably see him go out and then wind up in Denver, as other quarterbacks usually do before they disappear. But uh, no, not the last. And that will be the worst pack. nightmare. Drew Locke. Right. Drew Locke. He's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, I'm on board with you totally with the rankings. Uh, for me, Lions, Bears, Vikings, Packers. And I think that. <sighs> I think the Bears are quickly going to learn that Justin Fields, had they started him, they would be a better a better football team 
all year long. Um, they're probably going to give Andy Dalton too long and then turn over the reins to Justin Fields when it's too late because that feels like something Matt Nagy and the Chicago Bears would do. Uh, so I think things could be different. If they if they said from day one we're starting Justin Fields, I would think twice about, or I wouldn't maybe think twice about putting them ahead of the Vikings depending on what Fields turns into. But because they're not starting Fields, Andy Dalton's your starting quarterback. They're three for me. I love Justin Jefferson. I, I agree with you. I think Mike Zimmer – Listen, it's it's tough to win a division that Green Bay is in with Aaron Rodgers there, but I think Mike Zimmer is on the hot seat as well. And listen, they could get in as a wild card, like Sean said, but th that seat starts to become very hot. And the Packers, for me, he he will be an MVP candidate this year, Aaron Rodgers. He's going to play like a man pissed off because he is, and and good for him. And maybe maybe he'll get that second Super Bowl. Maybe he won't, but uh, the Packers win that division for me pretty easily. So speaking of coaches now, let's take a look at the first coach to be fired. This is going to be fun, and we hope a lot of you folks watching will really spin and either call us idiots or say, boy, Sean and Ashley are right on. So let's give it a try. Now, first coach to be fired. Let, let's put it in perspective, folks. Houston is horrible. We know that. But David Cully is a new coach. He's been an assistant yep. forever. He's older coach. Give him a little time, some type of groceries to cook, Okay. Sirianni first year with the Eagles. That's a tough situation. But again, a little time. Philadelphia fans try to give the guy a little time. And the Lions have a new coach, too. So we're not even discussing those guys. But a hunch to me says that I'm going to look in the desert. And here's why. There's been some play calling issues, roster issues, higher expectations of Kyler Murray. So I think the first coach to be fired will be Cliff Kingsbury of the Arizona Cardinals. I think they win about four games, and he won't be there at the end because he's going to be gone when they get blown out in a road loss in October when they play the Rams on the road. I don't think he's going to last, and that's my thought. Uh, Ashley, who would you say would be the first coach to be fired? Uh, this is interesting. I'm going to throw a few names out there, and we can go back to the AFC North uh, in a hot second. But Kingsbury is on my list, and this is going to sound crazy because I just talked up the Cardinals. So for me, it's so funny because you think like, well, if a team underachieves, then that coach is going to be, of course, a team, has to, a team has to underachieve in order for your coach to be fired. The Cardinals for me are one. The Cowboys are another. If the Cowboys underachieve in that division, I think Mike McCarthy is out. They were talking about him being out after last year, his first year. They were give him one stinking year, and they were talking about firing him. <laughs> so I think if they don't win that division, McCarthy is, I'll see you later, adios. And I think Zach Taylor um, in Cincinnati, like, listen, that's a bad situation minus Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow got hurt. If that team comes in last in that division, which they probably will, although the Ravens are, I mean, the Ravens, I, I feel bad for that team. And I don't like I the Ravens, but I feel bad for that team. They're, they are, might not have players on the field when all is said and done, but I think no Zach Taylor guys. in Cincinnati yeah. um, is possibly – his seat gets kind of hot too. But there are so many first-year head coaches when I was going through. I thought, well, all these guys are safe. There's like 10 or 11 first-year head coaches, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I, I, I look to the Rocky Mountains. I think the Emperor Railway is going to suffer through another uh, another year, and Vic Fangio is going to pay yep. for it with his job. Yep. Um, they just don't have as lot uh, enough on offense. Uh, I think the second guy is, is Zach Taylor, Ashley. Yeah, that team – he needs to have a better year there to get another year. But I, I think it'll start with Fangio at some point during the mm -hmm. year. Uh, he'll be first guy out. And and Eric, the AFC North called. Yeah, we, they want some love, man. But they want some love. You skipped them. The AFC North, yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to. He didn't want to talk about them. AFC I'm North. Sorry. Look, sorry about that. Hey, the Ravens. Do I feel bad for the Ravens? Oh. No, I don't. Oh, I do. No, no, no. Not since ever. They're going to have to field since, a high school team. No, no, no. Not since <laughs> Big Fat Tony Siragusa spiked Rich Gannon into the Oakland Coliseum turf for the AFC title game back in, in 01. I have no sympathy for the Ravens. They're going to finish last. Good. Win three games. That's okay with me. Oh. I, and I hope to, and I hope to get their doors blown off Monday night, too. Uh, I like Cincinnati. I like Joe Burrow. I think he's a, he's a good quarterback. He's got some good receivers there. Uh, I think they'll be improved. Tough division. You know, Pittsburgh. 
they got off to such a great start last year and then just they didn't open the ripcord on the parachute nearly in time and then they got blown out by Cleveland in the playoffs. I think the Steelers rebound. Um, one of the most underrated guys, I think, was Chase Claypool, receiver. Great compliment to Juju uh, Schuster-Smith. Um, Pittsburgh's going to run the ball. Najee Harris is a stud coming out yeah. of Alabama. Um, so they're going to have a really good offense, and, and T.J. Watt just re-upped with them. Cleveland Browns, come on down. It's time. You know, you were the great run last year, made the playoffs, battled the Chiefs in the playoff game. It's just Baker Mayfield's year to either step up and become one of the one of the leaders, one of the better quarterbacks, or he's going to regress. There's no middle ground with him. He's got to take that next step. I think he will. I think the Browns win that division. Those fans have just suffered and suffered and suffered, and hopefully they get uh, they get a nice season to cheer and have a have a good time and eat some more biscuits in the dog pound. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I to me. Until last week, I would have had the Bengals last, but now I think the listen, the Ravens have real problems. And I feel bad for them because I'm not a Raiders fan and I don't hate <laughs> the Ravens. But Lamar Jackson, I mean, they've lost every running back on their roster yeah. to a significant yeah. injury. They lost Marcus Peters to a significant injury. Like these are guys that will not be back until next year at the very earliest. Um, and Marcus Peters is that defense. Like he is the guy on that defense. So not only do they have problems offensively, but they have now have problems defensively and they haven't played a single game, uh, which is really tough. We saw that happen. Listen, San Francisco would say, Hey, Hey, we get it. Like we understand how that goes. And ultimately it, it paid off. Okay. For San Francisco, because they ended up getting a better draft pick out of it and then even trade it up. But I kind of feel bad for the Ravens, but they're probably going to end up last in that division. Maybe Lamar Jackson is good enough to get you third, but he's not good enough to get you that team second place. Uh, the Steelers to me are the second best team and the Browns to me, it's their division to win. I also think they kind of take that next step. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if Baker Mayfield is the ultimate long-term, you know, solution to quarterback, but this year will be a very telling, I think, situation yeah. for him. Like, can he take that next step? And if he doesn't, do you have to start talking about other scenarios? I have Cincinnati last, and I think I've said that statement more than I love my wife, so I'll <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, number three now, I dropped the Ravens down. It's it's horrible to read in the paper that, you know, the season hasn't even opened yet and another running back is down. Think about this. They're bringing Levian Bell in for a look. Oh, my yep. gosh. That's like Wade Boggs in a Yankee uniform. Levian Bell is not Mr. Popular in Baltimore, thank you. But that's what it's come to, and it's, it's unfortunate. So I'd move the Steelers up, but – I agree. I think we're all on that page with Cleveland. Browns also have the easiest overall schedule in the division. Mm. So that's going to help the cause as well. Uh, Stefanski, tremendous coach. What a change once they remodeled the coaching yep. kitchen, if you will, and got that guy out of there. Mayfield, this is a love affair just like we see Allen in Buffalo. And I, I know we tell stories, but I know the person in Oklahoma, sports information director, she worked there for many years, and she said, we love Baker Mayfield. And she said, perfect place for, for him to be, a hardworking city that just oh, wants yeah. a hug now and then. And he loves it there. And uh, Landry and Odell back, we've heard that. But if they know that there is only, last I checked, one football on the field, and they're not going to split it in half, They've got Garrett. The time is right now for the Browns to rock and roll. It's their division, and I hope they can pull it out. Yeah. All right. So, drum roll. What who, is, who is going to the Super Bowl? Uh, before we get to our whiteboard segment, MMM yep. across the board. Follow us on Twitter at MMMATV1, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. These picks will be legendary. We'll see who's right when we look back in February. I just rhyme like Eric. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, who you got? All right. I'm not super sold on my whiteboard. It was kind of a, a cram job here, but this is what we're going with. So I have, if I don't pick, if I don't pick the bills now, I'm never going to pick them. So I'm going bucks over bills in my Super Bowl. Josh Allen is my MVP because he is going to get the Bills to the Super Bowl. Mac Jones is my rookie of the year because, listen, we talked Ooh. about it. He has the keys to the car. No one else is driving that car, so he's going to play all year. 
I think if he can do enough, he gets he gets the MVP. There are plenty of good rookies out there. And I'm going to go with Mike Vrabel as my coach of the year with the Titans. I think, like we said, I think they win the division and maybe they get a couple of wins in the playoffs. And if by some crazy act of craziness, they could get to a Super Bowl, he would be my coach of the year. Eric, what say you? Got to have fun with this. So we'll start here. Mm -hmm. Green Bay over Kansas City. Okay. Now, I think the Rams will make it tough on the Packers in the NFC title game, but the Packers will finally get through it. It, 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 Hopefully, this is a Hollywood ending in Green Bay for Aaron Rodgers. What a tremendous matchup that'll be with the old man against the young kid again, and the Chiefs will fall in that one. Uh, I think Mahomes will be the MVP. I did think about Josh Allen. I just think what Mahomes could accomplish with the people that he has, that that kid's going to pull that out. I love your pick, Ashley, as a Pats fan, because I think Mac Jones has a great shot. I'm going to take a stretch like here and yep. go with Pitts. It's hard like to it. think of a tight end winning a rookie of the year, but this kid is going to make such a difference with yep. that team, and he's a six six stud, and I hope he does live up to the expectations we have, and I think the coach of the year will be Sean McDermott of Buffalo. Uh he is, without a doubt, the best thing to happen to that franchise in quite some time. I like it. All right. Look, in addition to the division winners, I mentioned the AFC East, Miami, New England going to the playoffs. I think the Raiders make it this year. NFC wild card, Seattle, San Francisco, and, and Minnesota. All right. So, yeah. oh, okay. conference yeah. champions. I like Buffalo over Kansas City. Green Bay over the Rams. Super Bowl. This year, the kick doesn't go wide right. It goes down the upright. <laughs> Herman Thomas Ooh. finds his helmet. Wowzers. Wow. Bills we got a Mafia. Bills get, Super Bowl team. Get the tables ready in Buffalo Woo. for the Bills Mafia. Have That's at great. it, folks. You're going to have a great year. My hometown, uh, Lockport, right near Buffalo. Good for them. Uh, I got Nana, 99 years young. Let's get her a Super Bowl. Oh, she's a Bills fan? Uh, she's actually more of a 49ers fan, but she lives oh, near boy. Buffalo, so she'll get on the bandwagon. All right, okay. MVP Aaron Rodgers, rookie yep. of the year. Ashley, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, let's, let's Jones. let's go. I, I, think, I think they're going to put him in a, a position to succeed and do it yep. really well. Coach of the year, I really like what Brian Flores has done in Miami. Wow, I love it. and I think they're going to be the they're going to be the team that uh, kind of nobody wants to play come uh, postseason time. Tua, I think Tua is going to have a big. Big uh, upside in year two. Uh, and I, again, I like what the Dolphins are doing down there. Yeah, I love the, like, this kind of, those whiteboards, we could go so many different ways. <laughs> I love the discussions that could branch off from that, especially like rookie of the year and coach of the year. Coach of the year is like, it's kind of endless because you think like, oh, what team could be good? You don't have to necessarily win a division to win coach of right. the year. You just have to be significantly better. Um, like if a team like, say a team like the Ravens somehow wins or comes in second place or you know what I mean then you're talking coach of the year for different guys for different reasons so I love that award because I it doesn't have to be you know your Super Bowl champ doesn't have to win it um so I really enjoy that award and don't forget that every coach folks uh watching every head coach this year who is fired next year will become a defensive or or offensive coordinator so don't worry about them (laughs) just get recycled through the washing machine I guess you only left now there have been some like new names to come up for D coordinators and stuff like D'Amico Ryans is a defensive coordinator now, I think in San Francisco. So like some guys are getting decent jobs, you know, and then coordinators are now becoming head coaches, which is kind of cool. Robert Sala will be interesting. And we didn't talk much about the Jets, but I think that's a team that will be much better. It just so happens they play in a division with yeah. three pretty good teams. Yeah. All right, I guess the only thing left now is to sit back and kick the ball off on Sunday for good, right? I got the chili recipe for the crock pot ready to go, and uh, we'll have at it. There is not much better than football season, I have to say. I mean, like, listen, I love the MLB playoffs, the NHL playoffs, but as a full season, the NFL is it for me. I love it. Well, guys, we broke it all down. the voice of God before we kick it to Ashley to wrap up. We hope that it'll be a marvelous season as the ball travels through the blustering snow. Good luck to all the kickers this year. Thank you. (laughs) Well, we'll see next week. We'll talk about all of our poor choices and what looks, you know, we'll overreact to everything, every win, every loss. We'll all overreact and it'll be so ridiculous because that's what we like to do here. But next week, week eight for us, 
Eminem and M across the board. It's been fun, guys. Uh, enjoy the football weekend. I probably Take won't care. see a whole lot of it because I'll be out shooting games, but uh, we'll do this again next week. All right. Thank you. See you later. See you all next week. Thank you.